Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So today I wanted to kind of detail a little bit on my journey making a router sled for flattening slabs. And as you can see from this blizzard of walnut shavings that um, I have come up with something. And so um, when I was doing my research for uh, router sleds and flattening jigs and all these different things, uh, I kept getting kind of pointed back to Nick Offerman and the way that he flattens slabs in his shop. And so I took a lot of inspiration from the the design that he uses, but I made modifications and I used different materials and, and that's the beauty of woodworking. You can just kind of um, take inspiration from various areas and combine it and make something that's your own. So um, in this video I'm going to discuss the router sled that I built for my needs and then I will go over the process that I used to flatten some of these some of these big slabs here um, so I hope uh, you are interested and you stick around
Well, I had an interesting turn of events here. I'm getting a little to the end of one of my passes here, and as you can see, there's just a little bit left, and the bit for my router decided to uh, take take off. Um, so, look inside there; it's actually broken off. And um, I guess I n had never considered. Um, the amount of stress that's being put on a quarter inch shank. So, not gonna do that anymore. One other thing was that that was my only, I mean I have a bunch of straight bits, but that one was three quarter inch. I don't think I wanna do this work with a half inch bit. So what I got here is a monster dovetail bit that's still actually got its rubber coating on it because it's never been used. And it's 13 sixteenths in diameter, so I might end up just switching over to this guy um, until I can get a proper uh, flattening bit for my router. And I think I found the half inch collet for this for this router, so I may stick with this Porter Cable router. Um, I'll carefully spin up this big bit um, on the single speed just to make sure it doesn't have any like crazy vibrations or anything and uh, go from there. just finished another this is the second slab out of that piece and I finished one side here some really cool looking crotch grain um, I'm not sure this is the side that's gonna face up though just because I have a large bark inclusion here and the pith of this branch is coming right through here I could probably take a little bit more off but um, that bark inclusion still goes for a good half inch to three quarters of an inch so I'm gonna do the opposite side and see how that one turns out because of these two slabs I can't book match them the way I'm going to build this table and that's a f project way in the future because I have to wait for these slabs to dry it's hard to explain um, and uh, you'll just have to look out for that video I found the broken bit check that out there we go snapped right off did my best CSI impression. I found, I found it over here. This is a the finished slab. I found it on the ground here, and I traced it back, and I saw where it had ricocheted off this piece of plywood, and took a big chunk out of it there. And then I followed it back over here, and you can see on this sticker, right there, where it kind of tore through that sticker. Um, and I was about in this position when it happened, and luckily I was pulling the router towards me when I did this, when it, when this happened, and so there was still the meat of the wood between me and the bit, and so the bit had no choice but to exit out that way, instead of, if I was pushing the bit through, it would have been putting the pressure this way on the bit, and it probably would have shot the bit towards me, so uh, that was not planned, I was just lucky, I guess, um, but I learned my lesson. So now this uh, this big beast here, half inch shank, 13 16 dovetail, is doing a good enough job until I can get a proper uh, flattening bit for this operation. So this project actually turned out to be pretty successful. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out, how easy it was to make, and I'm kind of 
a little disappointed that I didn't try doing it earlier. Um, I thought it was going to be a little bit more complicated than it actually was, but as you can see, everything runs really smooth, and um, the slabs turned out great, and now uh, the project that I have in mind for these slabs will have to wait a couple of years because um, I need to dry these out. I think I'm going to put them in my basement just so they're out of the way and they have a nice um, constant temperature and humidity um, to dry in. I think I'm going to reseal the ends with some really thick latex paint because I don't have any of that commercial wax product that's out there. Um, but I think latex is better than, any, than nothing and so I'm going to seal the ends and then I'm going to stack these in my basement. I hope this video was entertaining and informative for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments below. I read every single comment that comes through my channel. Uh, my channel is small enough to where I have that convenience. Um, also, if you um, like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe for more content like this. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.